Guys and girls, you've seen the title. In this episode, we're going to talk about what you can do to improve your passing in order to perform better in football matches. And before I start, I have to say that if you're looking for a golden tip and that overnight miracle, this is not the episode for you. But instead, if you're willing to listen and hopefully learn something, regardless of your position, keep watching. As a quick note, you can of course find all the timestamps in the first comment below. And with that out of the way, let's go. Step number one, the mindset of repetition. You watching this episode tells me you're not happy with your passing game. And instead of complaining and coming up with excuses, you need to get into the mindset of practicing and repetition. I've said this many, many times, and I will keep repeating myself until all the young players watching these videos gets it. The only way to learn different shooting techniques, including passing, is by repeating that kicking movement thousands of times. So yes, less YouTube videos and instead head out and practice every single day. Step two, master the essentials with both feet. I'm sure you have a teammate who can pass the ball with both feet and that skill is always respected and loved by every single coach in the world as it simply makes you a lot more dangerous force on the pitch. Now, with the essentials, I mean you being able to pass the ball with the inside, the outside of your foot, and of course, pinging the ball. And the reason you want to master those three essential passing techniques with both feet is that 99% of the times in game situations, you're going to pass the ball in one of those ways. So obviously, in order to perform better in matches, you should focus on those. So start working, passing the ball with both feet. Step three, the small details that make all the difference. Let me be super clear here. This is my most important tip of the day. And essentially, we're talking about decision making. There are many scenarios for passing that go far beyond the pure technical side of things. And here's my homework for you. Starting today and for the rest of your life, always keep these three things in the back of your head that currently separate you from all the greatest passers in the game. You ready? Here they are. Number one, should you pass the ball directly towards your teammate or push the ball slightly ahead of him to not only move him, the ball, but also the game forward? Obviously, the wrong decision here could ruin the chance for a quick counter-attack and in general, slow the game down, which is something we don't want to happen. So next time your teammate is not making a run to empty space, perhaps don't kick the ball 10 meters ahead of him. There are countless examples here, but I'm sure you already get my point. Number two, which foot should you pass the ball when you're passing the ball to your teammate in order to make it easy for him to continue the game? Now, the example here could be that your teammate is correctly positioned like this in order to attack and go this way. And obviously in that scenario, the ball coming from this direction, he should receive it with his left foot. But if you pass the ball to his right foot, he's gonna have to adjust his body, take a few extra touches, and again, slow the game down. Another example could be that you are dropping the ball back to your teammate to maybe clear the ball or even get a shot off on goal. And in those situations, you wanna give the ball to your teammates strong foot for a better outcome. You get the point, but it's extremely important to pay attention to which foot you're gonna aim your pass towards. And lastly, number three, the weight of the pass. Now, coaches always tell you to give those strong and firm passes, but actually, in some cases, strong passes are not the ones that the game requires, because if you pass the ball too hard, you're gonna make it very difficult for your teammate to receive the ball. So even though you kind of made a successful pass, you didn't really do any favors to your teammate who potentially lost the ball. Now, an example where a lighter pass could be very useful is, again, you dropping the ball back to your teammate in order for him to clear the ball, shoot the ball towards the goal, or especially if you're passing the ball back to your goalkeeper. But keep in mind that in some scenarios, too light of a pass will be easy for the defenders to intercept. This is the tricky thing when it comes to decision making because you always have to find the right moment for the right time in the game to pass the ball in a certain way. But the weight of the pass uh, makes such a huge difference. 
While all of this might sound like a lot, besides all the technical side of things, the execution of these three things is the difference in you being either a great or just an average passer. And you can start slowly. And in fact, just you knowing these things gives you the edge over some other people out there. And the last thing I'm gonna leave you with is for you to cut the BS and stop with the excuses. Yes, you might not have a beautiful and nice pitch like I do, and maybe you don't have five friends who can help you out with your training sessions. But you wanna hear the hard reality? Nobody cares about your excuses. And some guy out there who has it even worse than you do is working harder than you. So think about that one. Now, today, I'm actually not gonna ask you to check out the playlist right down here to learn even more skills, because I want you to go out and practice. But actually, you can spend two seconds and subscribe to our channel before you do that, because once you come back from practicing, you can check out even more videos. That's it for today, I'm out.